In this video, we're going to make some plaster materials in Rhino 3D using V-Ray materials for the V-Ray rendering engine. So I'm here in Rhino 7, and I have a simple scene that is already set to use a V-Ray sunlight system and the V-Ray rendering engine to render these four shapes that I'll be using to test out material features. And a link to this starting scene for material evaluation will be in the links to this video. I'm going to first open up my toolbar for V-Ray. Let's use the compact toolbar. And I'm going to dock it up here at the top of my screen. I will use the asset editor to open up my V-Ray editor. And then in this scene, I do not currently have any materials. So when I click on this materials, button, uh, instead of showing me the materials tab with, the, with the, the current materials in place, it gives me a prompt to make a new material. I'm going to choose generic. Generic will be the material we use for almost all of our materials in V-Ray. It's a very, very versatile template, has controls for all sorts of visual features of materials. Once I've made a material, you can see I now shift to a materials palette where I'm seeing my material. Currently, I only have one generic, and I'm also seeing my lights. I'm going to turn off my lights by clicking um, off of that light back onto materials. So now I am focused exclusively on my generic material. I also have open this right hand um, panel, which if you've just opened V-Ray may not be um, available to you. I can open it by clicking on this arrow, and this gives me controls about whatever is selected in my materials palette. I'm going to right click on my material name and rename this and call this smooth um, white plaster. And I'm going to assign it to all four of my materials. So I will select the four objects, excuse me, my four objects. So I'll select those in my viewport, right click on my material, apply to selection. And now I can make changes to this material, and I will see it in my viewport when I render. I haven't currently rendered yet, so I'm not seeing a very faithful um, or really any representation of the materiality. If, however, in my asset editor, if I click on this teapot, Render with V-Ray, I will get a rendering window that opens up and shows me my material. Currently, it's just a default gray material, but I can see where my sunlight is coming in from the right hand side and I'm getting some shadowing on the ground. Let's change our color by clicking on our diffuse color swatch and let's set this a little closer to white. I'm not going to go all the way to white because very few materials are actually pure in uh, a white color, but I'm going to go in the very light grays. And now let's render one more time. All right. That's looking a little bit more bright. It's certainly picking up a fair amount of color from my sky. My sun is somewhat low in the sky, so it's picking up some warmer tones. And I'm getting some blue tones in the shading and shadowed area. But, um, but I've got a good sense, especially in these directly lit areas, what my material is looking like. However, it's not yet looking like a plaster. And if it, this is a smooth plaster, I think I want it to be a little shiny. And I want it to have some sense of... Um, some roughness or some um, irregularity to it. All the changes that I make here in the right-hand panel are available in this preview window, so I won't have to keep rendering. I'll be able to look at this preview model with my material on it to make some judgments about um, how it's turning out. I'm going to close my diffuse settings and open up my reflection and increase my reflection from black or no reflection not all the way to pure reflection, but let's say maybe three quarters of the way. Notice I have a checkbox on by default, which is a Fresnel effect, and that limits my reflection to be um, more appropriate for non-metallic and non-glass surfaces. And I can begin to see a little bit of a highlight in my um, materiality in the reflection. However, plaster is not often perfectly sharp, and this highlight is quite sharp. The glossiness determines the sharpness of my reflection. I'm going to lower it from one, which is purely sharp, down to, let's say, 
0.85. And let me do a full render now and see what I'm getting. And I can begin to see now in my object surfaces a um, reflection. I can see a highlight coming from the sun. I'm going to amplify this reflection a little bit more up to full and lower the glossiness down so that it is lower. And what you can see is as I lower that glossiness, not only does my highlight get softer on my uh, reflection of my sunlight, but the reflective features that I was seeing in my surface is actually dulling a bit and becoming defocused or blurred. And that's, that's kind of what I'm looking for with my smooth plaster. I think I've gone just a touch too far, so I'm going to increase the value back to point. I'm also going to pop into my render settings and just set my quality up to high because I feel like I'm not able to see quite as much detail. And in fact, I'm going to set my render output to a higher resolution. I'm going to say 2000 pixels. This will allow me to render uh, more detail and zoom in and see that detail. It doesn't look like my rendering is any larger but in my frame buffer, I can see I'm at 50%. So if I use the scroll wheel on my mouse and scrolled in, I can now see at 100%, I'm seeing more detail. And if I scroll in one more time, I'm able to see some of the sky reflection on this object. And some of the, right here is a little soft reflection of that edge of the cylinder. And I can see some reflections here in the floor. However, this material is still a little too um, clean for me for a plaster. And I think I'm going to address that using the bump settings. Bump creates the illusion of bumpiness in my surface. And I'm going to use the texture slot here. And I am going to add a procedural or mathematic mathematical texture. I'm going to add a let's say a noise A. These are all different textures that I can add to create bumpiness or the illusion of bumpiness. Noise A, once I add it, I'm going to lose my material settings and I'll be in my noise settings. Notice I get an arrow under my material and I can toggle back and forth between my noise and my smooth plaster. I can already see in my smooth plaster preview that this noise is a little um, soft for a plaster. So let's look at its type, Perlin, inflected Perlin, marble with Perlin. These are all different characteristics of my noise. And I think I'm liking this marble with Perlin. I'm going to go ahead and do a full render. And it has definitely changed the characteristics of my object. It is a very small scale noise. If you look at it, it's, it's a very, really, really tiny in scale. So it's disrupting tremendously my plaster. And that wasn't the look that I was going for. So I'm going to come back to noise. And let's say for its frequency, this number, as I increase the number, it gets smaller and tighter in scale. And as I decrease, it gets larger in scale. I'm going to go down to point 0.2. I'm also going to go to my original material settings and the amount of the bump I'm going to lower to 0.15. It was at 1.0 and let's go down to 0.15. And now that I've made it much larger in scale and much softer or much uh, lesser in value, maybe I've gone a little too far. It's hard to see the noise at all. So let's find a middle ground here. And maybe I'll go up to 0.3 and set my noise to a frequency of perhaps 2. And let's restart that render. There we go. I can begin to see some, um, some stippling in my plaster. And now that I see that, I think I'm on track. I'm going to go to half the size and... 0.2 in my bump and render. Okay. I'm relatively pleased with this. We're in a highly subjective area in terms of what our 
surface looks like, so this may not be what your interpretation of a smooth plaster is. Maybe we would continue to lessen the bump, but it certainly has some smooth characteristics in its reflection, and it has some bumpiness and, and what, I, what I associate with plaster in terms of its irregularity, and I can see that very clearly in the highlight and in the reflections and how those are, um, how those are altered based on this. I'm going to actually make one more change while I'm here. I think I want to go down again to point 0.1 and let's say point 0.5 and render just to make it a bit more subtle. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that. That still feels quite smooth, but irregular. And so this is an approach to smooth plaster V-Ray material creation in Rhino 3D for rendering with the V-Ray rendering engine. And I'll upload a version of this final scene with this material um, into a GitHub link that I'll put into the video description.